Hi everybody, this is Evan Moltz. I'm going to show a Facebook uh, post in the comments below it to show how there are, um, you know, there, there, there are Americans who side with communism and they just don't even know it. So uh, one in particular said that he's Catholic and that he's completely against communism, but he is a huge supporter of Lindsey Graham, which means that you, you may not be definitely defined as a communist, but you're a neoconservative, conservative, which is the Trotsky side of communism. So a lot of people don't know that there was this guy named Leon Trotsky who was also a communist, but he just didn't believe in the way that Lenin and Stalin wanted to push for communism. He was actually for a different kind of communism. Well, the same ends, but by different means. But anyways, I'm not going to go into explaining that. If you want to Google Leon Trotsky, you can. If you want to research neoconservatism. Um, in the YouTube video, I will include links from this post. So anyways, this is a post by Barry Hull, um, basically disclosing that there is a ton of corruption with a new tax increase that's taking place in District 7, and that the voters are basically lied to, which happens very often now. Um, we, we have low information voters, and so low, low information voters are easily scammed, and that's what happened in Spartanburg County, South Carolina, in District 7. And um, Barry Hole is, 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 you know, he's, he's basically just disclosing this, that this is a fact. And, of course, it's getting a lot of comments. And I'm not going to go into every comment. But I do want to point out what I started out with. I said here, if a live Karl Marx would approve of what's taking place in District 7, the Holy Bible is no longer used, property is taken by force to pay for giant government schools, and the children are being taught at a young age to be good little communists. I can't believe parents defend schools that over-test their kids, teach them to read at low level. Phonics is no longer used as it was decades ago. And make no mention to being obedient to God as most public school leaders are atheists anyways. Now, I'm not saying that most are atheists here in Spartanburg County, but across the United States, and definitely those that control uh, the Federal Department of Education, they're, they're majority atheists, and they, they want to destroy Christianity. Um, and a lot of good you know Christians in Spartanburg County that are... Um, administrating the public school system here they just a lot of them just don't realize what's taking place and they don't really care a whole lot because you know a lot of them are just focused on their retirement and um, you know collecting the number of years they need to get to get there and any you, you know being a school teacher is a pretty decent living you get you know summers off and um, it's it's um, it is tough I mean I will say it's not easy to be a teacher and but public school administrators superintendents make a lot of money and uh, so it's it's definitely um, a uh, um, uh, a way to earn a decent living if you become a superintendent or high up you know the administrative ladder. But anyways, um, this this guy Jeff Mason comes in. He he later on discloses that he's Catholic, but he and he's against communism. So he he's trying to destroy my argument, and he points out that Karl Marx, you know, pointing out that Karl Marx. Um, you know, would agree with what's going on in District 7 is completely unnecessary. Well, is it? Is it unnecessary? And he's trying to go through and say, oh, there's not as much corruption as people think, and that I'm throwing stereotypes, and that I should just um, cool it and not bring this up. Okay, well, um, you know, I can be proven wrong. I'm, I'm welcome, you know, I welcome any, any, any discussion here. Well, Brian Miller comes in and says, hey, well, I'm waiting for answers on this, and then D. Curry comes in and he says, if you can't afford taxes going up $60 a year, then quit going out to eat. Well, that's sort of the way a communist thinks. So, I mean, if, if, if you don't realize that, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, I would never, you know, try to tax somebody out of being able to go out to eat. That's just, you know, that's wrong. Um, here it says, from me, I say, D, is that what you would say to the average homeowner in New Jersey that is now paying about $10,000 in property taxes? If only those homeowners would quit going out to eat, right? And that's because I know people from New Jersey that have moved to South Carolina, and it's only due to the fact that they're paying an outrageous amount for property taxes. So communism starts out where most people don't notice it, but after a while, you're taxed out of your house. You can no longer in the neighborhood that you've lived in for you know 20 plus, 30 plus years, and you suddenly have to leave the house you love because you can't afford the taxes. Um, OD says, you're comparing apples and oranges. They're paying, to, they're paying due to hundreds of millions, if not billions, while we are discussing 30 million. Not to mention the rates up here are higher anyways. 
Well, I mean, whatever. I mean, he's still arguing that you should quit going out to eat if 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 you need to save that sixty dollars to pay to you know schools. And I, I mentioned John Dewey. John Dewey had a master plan to destroy Christianity, and that's really at the heart of what uh, that's uh, is what it is at the heart of the public education system right now in in the United States. And this article here, I'll include it in the YouTube link, um, but it basically describes you know how this is all taking place. And it's 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 just basically through dumbing down kids and and making them good little communists, just as I said earlier. Um, I'm not going to go into every comment here. I mean, if you want to read every comment, you can. Uh, D is just pr proving that he's an adult child and that he really just doesn't know his facts. I, I know he's trying to, you know, be a good American, but you know, he just he's very under uneducated and very immature. And so I point out here that. This video over of America, he should watch, and this article, Republics and Democracies, he should read. I, I doubt he's going to ever get to it um, in, in the next few weeks. Hopefully sometime in his lifetime he gets to these and studies them, um, or else he's just going to continue He's going to continue being wrong and, and making a fool of himself. And then he accuses me of voting for Bernie, which, you know, these are just silly arguments, and, you know, I, I point to the fact that he sides with Bernie Sanders and... And, um, you know, he, he just doesn't understand, um, you know, why I would even consider sending my son to a private school, a private Christian school. And because, you know, you basically, he's basically saying that you get the same out of public schools as you do out of private schools. That's not true. And um, if you haven't read the book Crimes of the Educators by Alex Newman and Samuel Blumenfield, I recommend you do that. There's also this video here, which I will include in the YouTube link, that shows... Uh, tells the story of what the book is about. Um, but anyways, the argument goes on and on, and I point out that classical education is what I want my son to learn. I don't want him to um, you know, uh, have to live through common core schooling and that it's dangerous you know, to send your kids to public schools because they're, they're being sexualized in elementary school and uh, they're being taught to read incorrectly to where you know they a lot of them become dyslexic and they most graduates never read more than two books after they graduate high school i mean it's just it's sad i mean america in the early 1800s most graduates of any school would read tons of books and now our kids are so dumbed down to where looking at a book for more than a minute is too much for them and they, they need to do something else and be entertained and you know it's not their fault you know for a lot of them because they were just taught to read incorrectly and that's why they don't enjoy reading um, and I'm pointing out to the fact that you know if 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 you tax somebody and they can't pro, uh, you know pay their property taxes um, then if, if they don't pay them, somebody's going to come with a gun to their house and they're going to take their property. Even if the home loan is completely paid off, let's say there's no mortgage. And, and, and how, you know, what about that 85 year old person that, you know, can't pay his property taxes? Are you going to steal his home? Well, that's what the government here will do if, if the person can't pay his property taxes. So that 60 bucks may mean that somebody who's lived in his home, you know, for 50 plus years can't live it in it anymore and he's got to sell it and moot and downsize. That's not fair to the homeowner. That's not American. That's communism. Um, anyways, um, I point out that Lindsey Graham is a, a communist. He's a Trotsky communist. And then over here, Jason points out, so he, Jason's, he's, he's, a, he's a Catholic. He says he's practicing Catholic. So um, that's evidently something you say if you want to say you're more Catholic than others. But um, anyways, um, he, he points out that, you know, my thoughts are utopian thoughts, although they are American thoughts, the same thoughts as George Washington and John Adams. But, um, anyways, D tells me I should move to Cater where there is 0% tax. Another silly thing to say. Um, paying your tax is a requirement of home ownership. Duh. Okay. Well, what about when taxes get to be $10,000? I mean, is that a requirement? I mean, it's just... How much can somebody be taxed each year? Twenty thousand, thirty thousand. When does it stop? So, as Americans, we should have a right to own our property. We shouldn't have to worry about the government taxing us so much to where we have to move from our properties. So, I point out that they're 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 proving their points throughout this argument that they are on the side of communism. They they don't like constitutional republics. They want democracies. Jeff right here is proud to say he voted for Lindsey Graham and. And uh, we, 
to hell with globalism. He says we do things our ways, our way. Guys like Graham's, guys like Graham are the rule, not the exception in South Carolina politics. You know, speaking like a true Leninist right there. You know, those of us who know Lindsey Graham, he wants to destroy Christianity. If you really study what Lindsey Graham is doing, he's trying to destroy Christianity. Who knows what his home life is? He's never been married. You know, he's. He's a he's a different dude. I mean, and he loves war. You know, something something's very wrong about this person who says he's a practicing Catholic. Um, he's saying that Lindsey Graham is the rule and that we should support him. Um, and this is where he says he's a practicing Catholic. I fully re rebuke communism in every form. Can we can we debate like educated individuals or should we settle for name calling? Well, you know, if I'm calling somebody, you know, if if it's a fact that he's a communist. I think that's okay to say. I mean, it's not name calling. I'm just defining people what they are, and you'll you'll see as we go further that I that I do this. I'll include this link to who are the neoconservatives in the YouTube page. Um, I point out that they're neoconservatives, and um, um, you know, Irving Kristol coined the name. So I'm not making this up that they're neoconservatives. I did not make up the name neoconservative. It wasn't made up by the John Birch Society. We just took it from the neocons because they're the ones who named themselves. And they basically switched from the Democratic Party in the 1950s, 1960s into the Republican Party because the Democrat Party became too Marxist for them and they needed a place where they could spread their Trotsky communist you know, strategies, which is basically the same game plan. New world order, no religion, uh, kids are brought up by the school, families go away, and but instead of doing it by the by wars, they do it by getting uh, um, people to vote themselves into communism and to eventually be okay with it. So it's actually it's it's a it's a more pleasant way of inserting communism. Rather than killing millions of people, they do it by convincing people that communism is better for them. Um, anyways, uh, keep on going here. Oh, Jeff Mason, he also supported George W. Bush. He doesn't he doesn't regret it. I trust Irving Kristol in the National Review far more than I do a bunch of alt-right hack publications. Okay, so the John Birch Society is not alt-right. We're an Americanist organization. We believe in what George Washington, John Adams, and you know most of the other founders believe in. We believe in obeying the U.S. Constitution. So apparently we're alt-right according to this guy. So he's resorting to name-calling, probably because he's upset because I'm maybe the first person that's labeled him as a communist. Um, and then Dee's being childish here. I think we need a tyrant. Um, so I disclosed to Jeff because this did happen to me yesterday. I say today I just met with a Roman Catholic that lived through communism in Hungary. If you if you told him that you were a practicing Catholic and supporter of Lindsey Graham, you would get quite an education from him afterwards. And this is true. This this Catholic who lived through communism in Hungary, he understands the game plan of those that want a new world order. He would say, don't trust Lindsey Graham, don't trust George W. Bush. They are the bad guys. Unfortunately, this young guy who went through public schools, Jeff Mason, is fooled and he believes in his heart that, oh, he's supposed to be loyal to Lindsey Graham and George W. Bush. You know, you got to feel sorry for him because that's just been his education. And, you know, last night when we we're having this conversation, this is the first time he's ever been <laughs> confronted on this. Um, so I point out William F. Buckley was a member of School and Bones, and he tried to ruin the Roman Catholic Church. And this is true. You just need to read Jack McManus's book. Um, it's called uh, Pied Piper for the Establishment. And here's a video about his book, and I'll include this one in the links. Um, I tell them I hope they're learning a lot from the discussion. And just to be cool like them, I, I, I put the mic drop name tag here. And then I went to bed last night, and then... Um, but. This came up um, this uh, yeah late this morning, and so he's trying to say, I have a degree in political science. Well, that's what I run into a lot when I argue politics. I have a degree in this and that. Well, you were educated by communists. Who controls these government public colleges now? You're, you're going through a communist factory. Having a political science degree you know, basically means that you've been brainwashed. And, yeah, you can have a political science degree and not be a communist, but that just means you knew better. You learned through time, like I did. I learned because I had a professor that lived through communism in Romania, and he said, Evan, guess what? It's going to happen here in America, and just wait, wait and see and, and do your best to work against it. So, okay, so that's what I'm doing right now. And I didn't really believe him at the time, but the more I've lived in the United States, I've, I've gone through my 20s, I'm now 33, I see that this is something that's actually happening. Um, 
And he says, I've ignored the discussion about school district seven and I'm just a troll. And here's, I close it out this way. Your degree in political science is likely why you believe in democracy and not in a constitutional republic. You may not be a low information voter, but due to your support for Lindsey Graham, you even, you're, you are even more dangerous than a low information voter. I do, I do not side with isolationism. I side with the U.S. Constitution and its requirement to have Congress declare war. I didn't, I didn't ignore the reason we all had this discussion in the first place. I was accused while making my points that public schools are producing com – when I said that you know we're producing co communists, I, I was accused that I was wrong. And I made my point by proving that Jeff and D side with a brand of communism. They are siding with Trotskyism. They – D's, D's not D's not speaking out against this, but Jeff is saying, oh yeah, um, Irvin Crystal, National Review, William F. Buckley, George W. Bush, Lindsey Graham, I'm on their side. Well, they are Trotskyites. They are with Leon Trotsky, who was killed in Mexico by Marxist communists, um, but it's still communism what he was pushing. So wake up, people. This is this is what our public school children are learning, and of course, D, being the adult child he is, he's, he puts up this video, or this GIF that says, I pity the fool. So anyways, I want you to realize, if you're watching this, and I know you've watched this for a long time, that our public schools are producing good little communists. And this just, just goes to show, if I'm the first person that's confronted Jeff, if, if he believes he's been on the super right side for all this time and nobody's confronted him, why am I the first one that's confronted him about this? And he's gone through public schools, he's gone through colleges, so other people have had thousands of hours with him to teach him these things, but yet me, I come in and in about you know two hours worth of time, I shed light on what he's never been taught, and I hope he does, you know, become an Americanist someday, and he reads what the founders believe. I hope he reads the Federalist Papers. I hope he becomes a member of the John Birch Society. I hope he reads our books and watches our videos, but, you know, he may not just because he's so brainwashed, he may not be able to come out of this, uh, you know, dark place he's in where he's wanting to tax people so much uh, for the good of the public school system, which is basically... Um, the dream of, of people that wanted to destroy Christianity. So um, anyways, I'm going to post this on um, uh, as many places as I, as I can. Please help me share this. This this is a good education for people and you know really needs to get out there that this is going on in America because we are coming very close to losing our constitutional republic. And I, I don't want to lose it. I hope you don't want to lose it either. Thank you so much for watching.